Hello all, welcome to the Empirical and Molecular Formulas podcast. Thought we'd start with a little joke, so I'll give you a second to read it. Thought it was kind of cute. Hopefully you're past that point though. Alright, so we're going to be talking about empirical and molecular formulas. Um, an empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio of the elements in a compound while the molecular formula is the actual number. Now it could be the, wholest, uh, the lowest whole number ratio or it could be a multiple of the uh, lowest whole number ratio, a multiple of the empirical formula. So sometimes they're the same, sometimes they're different. Here are some examples. Okay, so here you see molecular formulas. So the molecular formula of carbon dioxide is CO2. So you got one carbon to two oxygens. So you see that um, the coefficients one and two are not divisible by anything other than one. So the empirical molecular formula are the same in this instance. Now the next one down, you have a H2O2, hydrogen peroxide. And you see they both have a two as a subscript. So both of those could be reduced to one to one. So here's the molecular, and the empirical is the lowest whole number ratio. Another example, we have a carbon 4, H8, O2. Um, you see that all of these little subscripts are divisible by 2, so we could reduce them to uh, C2H4O. Okay, so empirical is the lowest whole number ratio. Molecular, what you see in nature. All right, to find the empirical formula, you have to follow these steps. First, you change your grams to moles. Then you're going to divide by the lowest number of moles. Then you will round or multiply that to get whole numbers. And these numbers will become the subscripts for the element you're solving for. Now, on number three, this little multiply tip, you might need to come back here uh, sometime during the video um, or in the future if you get uh, confused. All right, if you get a decimal of a 0.5, we know that 0.5 is the common uh, fraction, one half. Okay, so in this case, you're going to multiply by 2 to get rid of it. Okay, see? Okay, um, the fraction or the decimal 0.3, that is the common fraction, one third. So you will multiply by 3, the denominator, to get rid of it. Now, if you have a 0.25 or 0.75, those are the common fractions 1 fourth and 3 fourths. And so you, again, multiply by the denominator to get rid of that. Now, I know this is all hogwash right now, but it'll make sense in a minute. All right, now I've got to figure out how to change the slide. Hmm. Oh, okay. I think I got this. Wait, I need the mouse. There we go. Okay. All right, so uh, this problem, what is the empirical formula of a compound that is 25.9 grams of nitrogen and 74.1 grams of oxygen? All right, so we're going to start with our nitrogen. The first step was uh, take the grams and convert it to moles. All right, so you got grams on top, so you got to put grams on the bottom, and it'll be the molar mass of nitrogen, and uh, one mole on top, so that cancels your grams, all right, and then you've got your answers, 1.85, all right, now you got to go do the same thing for oxygen, okay, oxygen is 74.1 grams, see if I can drag this little thing over. Whoop, there it goes. Okay. All right. And again, we're going to take it to moles. So we have grams on the bottom, and that would be the molar mass of oxygen. One mole on top. Grams cancel. All right. And here we get 4.63. Okay. The next step was look at your numbers. Which one's the smallest? This one's the smallest. Okay. So now you're going to divide both of these numbers by the smallest number. All right. 
So you get one up here, and then down here you get 2.5. All right, so 2.5, that's the common fraction, one half. So we're going to multiply both of these numbers by 2 to get rid of a half, because you can't have a half of an oxygen atom, right? Makes no sense. So you got to multiply by 2, everybody by 2, and get rid of that little half of an atom that can't really exist. So you got 2 and 5. So you got N, 2, and then O, oxygen, 5. Okay?